Yeah, um, so this morning I did a session looking at how to get more from student speaking and I think often speaking is one of those things in language teaching that's a bit like air, it's sort of omnipresent and we almost take it for granted and we maybe don't think enough or as much as we could about what it is we're doing as teachers before we're asking students to speak while they're speaking and after they speak. Mm -hmm. So really I was just trying to sort of put that under a microscope a little bit and to think about what we're doing, why we're doing it and if we can do it differently or better. So that was the one this morning. Um, later on I'm going to do a talk, uh, sort of a big picture talk called English Futures, which is really thinking about what kind of English using futures our students are going to have and what the implications of those English using futures might be for classroom content and for pedagogy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you said earlier that this second talk is a, a new one. It is. Where's your and inspiration? And the first one was a new one. Oh, right, okay. So, where's your inspiration come from for these two talks? Um, the one about the speakings really just come from. Well, we wrote a methodology book last year called Teaching Lexically, mm -hmm. which I highly recommend to your viewers, published by Delta Publishing in its multi award winning development series. Um, but it's just something I'm interested in in the classroom, you know, it's a kind of just a, a classroom talk, that's mm -hmm. something I haven't done before. The one this afternoon was come really from watching a David Gradle plenary at ITEFL in Harrogate three, three years ago maybe, where he was talking about English futures and, and the kind of what he's seeing happening in the big developing markets using English to brick countries and um, that kind of thing. And so I, I was sort of watching that with great interest, thinking about what that might imply for what we're doing in the classroom. Because he was really talking about it as a kind of big picture, this is what's happening, not what does it mean you should be doing in the classroom. So I wanted to kind of follow on from that mm -hmm. and to push that idea a little bit more towards something practical mm -hmm. from a teacher's point of view. Have you seen big changes in your classroom? Um, yes, I think so. I think I mean, there's, there's a lot more high level students than there used to be, is one thing, um, a lot more. You know, you're getting a lot more students coming in who are CAE, CPE kind of level. Mm -hmm. I'm also seeing in London particularly a lot more people who are already post CPE and who traditionally have basically been ignored by language teaching because it's assumed they're somehow the finished product mm -hmm. who, are, who are still wanting more and still wanting to improve and needing English for all kinds of niche areas. And I think you're also seeing more of what David Gradle talks about in that talk, which is basically people with quite low levels of English mm -hmm but who need their English for a very specific kind of purpose um, and they often don't need to be able to do much more in English than perform the functions that are useful for them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you, you're seeing both those kinds of changes. Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest difference is people are, particularly people coming to the UK, are arriving better than they used to be. Mm -hmm. um, because of the, the, the global pressures and requirements for people to speak English, because of massively improved teaching, I think, in, lots of local, regional kinds of contexts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So, what do you foresee as the, the biggest change on the horizon? My God, um, I, I don't have futurist written on my business card, <laughs> so I, I tend to avoid those kind of predictions. Okay. Um, uh, uh, my gut feeling is uh, a lot of the, the people who do make the big predictions about the future are doing it a lot of the time to sell stuff, and I think that's particularly mm -hmm. true in the kind of ed tech sector. Mm -hmm where we're being persuaded that the future is going to be entirely technological and by the way, have I told you there's this new product available? Um, and I'm, I'm quite sceptical of a lot of that stuff and I think a lot of it is Emperor's New Clothes that teachers generally aren't taking on board as much as the evangelists want them to. Um, I think generally you're just going to see a, a continuing level of improving teaching around the world. I think the level of English that non-native speaker teachers speak is obviously massively improved. Um, you know, you see it in Spain, you, you see kind of the, the, the level of people coming to the conferences compared yeah. to say 15 years ago is, is already much better, I think. And I think, you know, good teaching will continue to exist as it's always done. Mm -hmm. um, possibly a slight worry I have is something Michael Son said he was worried about yesterday as well, which is there's a sort of drift 
more towards doing and away from teaching. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes the tech can kind of exacerbate that because it gives us all this super fun stuff to do. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to kind of get distracted by that wonderful kind of froth and to forget that actually we still need to be focusing on what language we think the students are going to need. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we, we will see a kind of move towards more technological integration, but hopefully more principled technological inter, inter, sort of innovation and, and, and utilisation. I think already you're seeing a kind of backlash against the first wave of tech evangelism, because a lot of people have tried stuff out and sort of gone, it's all right, but what do I actually do with this and what's the point of it and how does it help me get my students through the you know, 16 exams that they have to do? So that would be my moderate piece of futuristic prediction. Thank you very much. We should hold you to this, of course. <laughs> and on our 50th anniversary, see if you're around. I, I hope I'm around to see it. I hope I'll be here for it. Thank you very much Thank indeed. you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.